machine in a van? Yep, that's right you guys. I'm setting up my sewing machine in my van and I'm going to be making a few things. And I want to show you guys a little bit how I do that. So stick around. Okay, you guys, so here's a little backstory on this. Um, yes, I do have a sewing machine. I've had it for a very long time. Uh, my mother gave it to me a long time ago as a gift. And I, for right now, have to keep it in my storage unit because I have, haven't quite figured out um, how to put it in the van. And um, since I have my storage unit, I might as well keep it in there for the time being. Um, and um, as you know, I've been helping a friend work on his van. Um, I put that in one of my updates uh, recently. And I thought we were going to be making curtains yesterday at his place. And so I gathered up a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, as you can see, um, I'm having to stuff all my sewing stuff up here in the front. Um, <laughs> that way, in case I have to keep it in the van overnight, I don't have a big, huge gob of stuff and no room to do anything else. Um, <laughs> and here is my sewing machine back here. Um, well, it turns out we ended up just fitting some reflectix to his windows in his van, and we're going to see how that goes first for a few days. And then we possibly will be making some curtains later on. So that wasn't really worth taking pictures of. And I really haven't um, asked him if I could put anything up on YouTube yet. So I kind of just haven't really been filming when I go over there. And um, quite frankly, a lot of this van build stuff, I don't know how you guys can stand to watch it. Because to me, it's not even good video. A lot of times, a lot of times it's like, you know, watching paint dry. So there's just a lot of stuff I just don't even want to like like go into when I go up there and do things. Um, if he'll let me, maybe I'll take some pictures of some of the process and what the van looks like when we're done. But um, yeah, to me, it's just kind of boring stuff. But back to the subject. Um, so I already have my sewing machine out, so I might as well take advantage of it. And um, lately, I've been making masks for myself and co-workers because the masks that we have at work... Um, they just don't fit very well, especially for me. Um, I have a lot of problems. Uh, I guess my face is just shaped funny or it's small or something like that. So the masks tend to uh, basically poke me in the eye no matter what I do. I pull them down and pull them down and they just poke me in the eye. So I decided that um, I'm pretty fed up with that. So I designed my own pattern um, and um, it turned out pretty good so uh, I was making them by hand but they take a quite a long time to make by hand and so now that I have the sewing machine out I decided I'm just going to um, sew up a few um, on the machine and see how that goes and I was going to show you guys the process that I have to set up my machine in here and um, all the things that I have going on to make that possible and so hopefully you know maybe you'll get some ideas for your van and, um, you know, maybe get some ideas for mask making for your own safety or whatever you want to call it. Okay, guys, as you can see, this is my sewing machine. And it's pretty old and it's a little bit beat up. And the way this one was built, uh, you couldn't th thread the needle unless you took this uh, guard off here. So uh, basically, um, I kept taking it off. And um, after a while, I never put it back on because it's just a pain in the butt. And then, unfortunately, I lost the piece, so um, it's permanently like this. So now I just have to keep it clean, <laughs> um, keep the dust out of there every once in a while. So, um, as you can see, the power does work um, on the machine in my van here. And just so you know that I'm in my van, here is my mess. That's my pork rinds, by the way. <laughs> and I'm going to show you what I have here. Okay, and I've showed you guys this if you've seen my solar video, you've seen my solar setup. But what I have here is a Mighty Max Solar 1000 watt 12 volt inverter. And it's a pure sine wave and it's really nice. And then I just, all I have plugged into it, because there's like a plug right there. All I have plugged into it is just a power strip, and then I plug my sewing machine right in there. Now, I could probably put it right directly into the inverter, too, if I wanted to, but, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to have that surge protection on it, just in case, because you never know. Um, this is a hillbilly system. So, um, and yeah, this is pretty cool, because this inverter um, 
I've used it maybe two or three times since I've owned it. Um, I normally just do small jobs with it, like charging my drills and things like that. But as you can see, you know, I just have my sewing machine set up on my old dresser. And uh, my van's kind of a mess right now because I have to, um, you know, move things around so that I can make this possible. And um, here's the sewing kit that I have um, for the masks right now. It's got a bunch of other stuff in there, a bunch of uh, fabric. But what I wanted to show you guys is this. Okay. So I just took a paper bag and I designed my own pattern. You just... Um, you know, I just drew it and cut it out. And what I did was I took, um, let's see if I can get this down for you guys. I took just a plain mask that somebody had made that was kind of small compared to the other ones. Um, this mask here. And I basically, I just kind of uh, traced around it first. Made the pattern a little bit bigger. Because you always want seam allowance. You want, you know probably at least a half inch on the sides for seam allowance. And um, then I basically drew it the way I wanted it to be. Now these dips right here are pretty important because that goes under the eye and this goes over the nose. So if you are going to make a mask like this, that it, and it works for me, it works pretty well. Um, just remember you're going to want to draw kind of like a little bump, like a mountain. And then I made it round on the bottom because the first ones I were making, um, I was making them square and that kind of worked. But then I ended up having to sew the sides up a little bit to make it fit right. So now I just cut it, you know, rounded and that seems to work better. And then I go, after I get all the hem seamed, um, I go up about, I'd say, you know, an inch or so. And I just put a dart on each side right there. Um, and when it's done, it looks, this is one of my handmade ones where I didn't use a machine, but it looks, you know, kind of like a regular mask. You see the little darts right here? A dart just means you just kind of fold the fabric over and then sew it. So then it just kind of makes a pucker. And what that does is it, it lets it poof out in the front and then it kind of tightens it up towards the back and um, it makes the chin part tighter so it fits tighter. And then this part just kind of goes over your nose and this part stays, you know, under your eyes. And it works out really well. Um, I'll let you guys see the back side. But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an idea, you know, of, of maybe how you can make your own mask. And like I say, you know, um, this one's hand sewn, um, if you can see. So if you don't have a machine, you could always just hand sew your own masks if you need to. Um, and, um, this is pretty thick material. It's like a flan a flannel type of material. So that's why I only used one layer and it's really soft and it's really nice. Now I'm not saying that any everybody should use flannel. Um, cause you know, they have a problem with just about everything we make these things out of, but, um, I'm doing it anyway. Like, uh, badge likes to say, I'm not asking permission because I'm pretty much sick and tired of the status quo of what we've got here. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this, I'm going to put this thing on and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay. Here's what it looks like. Um, I think it turned out pretty good. As you can see, it's tucked under my chin and it stays pretty far away from the eyes while still covering the nose. And this one for me could be adjusted a little bit smaller. Um, but this one may not necessarily be mine, so I'm not doing that. I'm going to let whoever I give it to um, adjust it. But the cool part is um, you can take these little um, elastics here and they're so thin that you can just tie it in a knot and, and um, make it tighter if you need to. Okay, as you can see, I have it pinned up and I decided to um, do a pre-stitch or whatever you want to call it on the top and the bottom. And so, um, here we go. Um, it's the first time ever that I'm sewing in the van. Um, it's been a long time since I've gotten to use my sewing machine because I've been in the van for so long. So here it goes. Let's see how it works and everything with my inverter and everything. Oh, well, so far so good. Let's see how the curve goes. So you want to kind of go slow so you don't miss the curve. 
case you're wondering, you guys, I am standing up. I don't really have a chair for this, and my dresser is pretty high. It's right at standing desk level, so it works pretty good. And there you go. We've got the, the bottom part sewed. Now I just need to do this all over again. Um, but first we're going to stitch the top. Okay, so now as you can see, I've got the top and the bottom double stitched and double hemmed, which is, I think, a good thing to do. Um, you guys can sew yours different however you like. Now the next step is I have to um, fold and pin the sides. Now, all of you guys are probably laughing at me. The people that sew all the time are probably going, why isn't she ironing any of this stuff? Well, I don't have enough electricity to iron this. Um, I do have a very small travel iron that works great for um, doing seams and stuff when you're sewing things. But I'm not hooked up to shore power. I'm doing this off of my solar. Um, and on a little bitty van like mine, you know, there's just not that much electricity that's being produced right now. And in fact, a tip um, to anybody that's going to be doing this, um, we have a bad habit of leaving our machines on um, the whole time we're doing a project. And in a van like this, you just, you don't want to do that. Especially um, if your machine is older like mine and it has an incandescent light bulb in it that takes a lot of light. I mean, it takes a lot of power. Um, you want to shut your machine off in between stages of your project. Um, if it's a project where you're going to be sewing for a really, really long time, you might consider um, planning for that, i.e. making sure you don't use a bunch of electricity before you uh, decide to sew. And make sure you're parked in a sunnier spot so that you can be getting that sunshine. Right now I'm kind of sort of in the shade so my um, charger isn't charging to its full potential. But it's still really hot outside here so I can't really, um, I can't justify like being, um, making myself hot just so I can sew, sew something. This winter when it's cold outside and I want to be in the sun, um, it's probably going to be one of the times when I do a little bit more sewing. We shall see. We're going to see how that works. Um, if I even have the machine in here in the winter, it just depends on what happens. Okay, now here comes one of the coolest parts and probably one of the important parts. Okay, this is what um, I was talking about. It's called a dart. Um, for those of you that know sewing, you know what I'm talking about. You're basically putting like a pleat or a pucker in the material. And um, in this case, you want to start the dart about an inch from the bottom, maybe just a little bit less. I kind of eyeball these things. Um, I don't put everything in my patterns because I have a design in my head and I just kind of sew like I paint. I just do it as I go along, and um, a lot of times, because I did it myself, I can repeat it. But basically, you start an inch up from the bottom, and then you just kind of um, you just kind of fold it over. I don't know if I got it in frame. But you just kind of fold it over like that, so you kind of get a like a zigzag looking thing in there. I probably want to go a little further up. This is hard to do. And show people okay so now I've got it like that and you can see there's like a little pleat and you could check it see I'm a little bit off so you're gonna want to come down a little bit right and you want to do your little zigzag again if I can do this on film I can do it but when I'm trying to film myself it's kind of hard so then I just do that and so now um, basically you want to make sure that the angle do goes down towards the bottom. So that means it's going to be um, less material taken up as you get towards the towards this end, towards the bottom. So you've got more gathered up here than you do towards the bottom. That's what makes it a dart because it makes it kind of triangle shaped in, in the material. Um, mine isn't exactly even, but I'm hoping that you guys get the idea. It's just... You just kind of fold it over, and when you're ready, I'll fix this in a minute because I can't do it on film. I can't do it while I'm trying to film it, but I just want to show you because um, it's 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 not going to be even. <laughs> it's like totally off. But for the purposes of showing you guys how to do it, I'm just going to keep going with this one. So you've got your zigzag thing right here, and because this material is kind of thick now because I've sewed it so many times, you're just going to want to pin it right next to the hem and pin it down. And then as it gets towards, 
Because like I said, you could leave it like that and sew it. But because I'm not doing this by hand, I, I don't want to. I want to pin it. So at least have two pins in here. And so I'm going to kind of kind of make it, force it to kind of go down, you know, towards the bottom. This I'm hoping this makes sense. And then, and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to pin it right there. So as you can see, well, maybe you can't see, but there's, there's more material gathered up here than there is down here. And, but it's still pleated. It's still in a fold. So hopefully that makes sense. And that the reason why that's important is because in this area right here in the middle, you want that to be more 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 room you want it to have more room whereas over here on the sides because you want it to ch tuck up under your chin you want this to be smaller and then the middle to be bigger so that's why you have to make sure that you gather up less material as you go down kind of in a diagonal shape and then when I'm done with that and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pin it right there and then we're going to take and we're going to sew it. But I'm going to fix that first before I sew it. Because see, it's kind of almost there, but not quite. And I want it to be even because it's going to go on somebody's face and you don't want that. You don't want it to look funny. So um, I'm going to get this evened up and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to sew it. Okay, so I got it evened up. And the best thing to do is just to get it, you know, um, set it on your lap or put it on a flat surface so that you could actually see what you're doing. Um, I was just trying to film it for you guys because my camera's way up here and so that it didn't work out. But as you can see, it's it's way better now. Um, so that's something that somebody's going to want to put on their face as opposed to something that was all, you know, crooked and weird. So I'm just going to sew not very far because you don't want this dart very big. You just want it to be there enough to where, um, you know, it'll it'll snug up on the face and still leave that pucker so just after where you had the pin, where I put the pin, I'm going to be stopping. So I'm just going to like that. And now I'm going to lock the stitch. Go back and forth a little bit. And that's it. I don't want this thing to be that long. Because even if part of it gets covered up by where I'm going to put on the straps, it doesn't matter because that little dart is in there. And it's going to make all the difference in the world when I put, put it together. Um, and you guys will see. But see, that's probably maybe an inch and a half long at best. So yeah, you don't want to sew very far on this. Okay? And then the next step, I'll show you guys in a minute. Okay? Okay, so now the next step is we've got the darts in there, right? And it's looking pretty good. And if you wanted to, um, you could put an extra dart up at t on the top. Um, but I don't feel that's necessary because of the next step that I'm going to show you guys. Um, so basically you just fold it over. And what you have now is like it's going to be a tube in there. It's going to be like a pocket. And that's where your elastic's going to go. And you just fold it over on both sides. And you want to sew it close to the edge so that you have room to put your elastic on the inside. You don't want to sew it up here because then you won't be able to put it in. So sew it down here. Um, towards your hem and um, then you'll have like a little tube that you could put your uh, elastic in and don't worry if you fold over most of the dart because like I said the darts just there to create that pucker you know so it doesn't have to have much of it showing after the mask is finished okay as you can see it's all sewed up and now I have these little tubes in here where I can stuff my elastic and um, now <laughs> I want to show you guys the comparison. You see how little this thing turned out? You might not be able to tell right now. But here, here's the pattern that I used. See how little that turned out? That's why you got to make a bigger one. One that's way bigger than what you think. Because look how little this thing is compared to that. Now that's going to fit over a small person's face. If you're a man and you want to make a mask or if you just simply want a bigger one for whatever reason you're probably going to have to make a really great big one because by the time you're done all that material gets basically soaked up into that or whatever you want to call it and look how tiny it is now i just wanted to show you guys that <laughs> okay guys so um when you do this you want to get the skinny uh, elastic i don't even know what size this is it's just it's skinny and you don't want it too skinny you don't want it to be a string either 
because that's not comfortable and if it's too fat then it doesn't have enough give and it's just not comfortable behind your ears and a lot of you probably are already realize this because we're well into this thing um but for those of you who don't um you know word of advice use the skinny elastic and what i like to do is i like to um you know double it up so i'm cutting it to where it's just a little bit longer than the outside part of your mask all right and then next what i do is i take a carpet needle it could be plastic it could be metal whatever but a carpet needle seems to work with the best because it's kind of dull right here on the end and it's got a big eye and you could just thread it like a, a piece of thread and you don't want to thread it you know halfway because that's not going to work you want to leave it kind of long on one side and then short on the other and there's a reason for that because it's got to get all the way through um if that makes any sense and then you're going to see the top part of your tube that you just made in your mask here you want to thread the needle up along through there now you're going to probably have a little bit of trouble like i am right now where the dart is and just be patient and just kind of work it through and then the needle will come through the other side and then you just pull it through now see if i'd pulled it in half then it wouldn't have come all the way through and then it would have just went right through the tube and then you would have had to do it again this way if you leave a little short piece up here and a longer piece on the end um, it just strings right through and then what you want to do is you want to take these two ends here and you're going to have to do this by hand um, because these are just too small at least for my machine to put in my machine so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fold these over like this overlap them just a tiny bit and then i'm going to hand stitch them together okay and then that will make your ear loop now if the mask is still a little bit too baggy for your face let's say and this one doesn't look like it would be be baggy on anybody um you can the beauty of this elastic is you can basically adjust it you can tie it very easily in a knot and you can just tie it in a knot too without sewing it if you don't want to if you want to and you just tie it in a knot and tie it really tight and it's going to stay and then you just you know feed the knot back through inside of the tube and then you won't see the knots and then it'll be adjusted perfectly for whoever's wearing it okay you guys so here it is it works see it's not going to win any beauty contests but it stays over my nose under my chin and away from my eyes and so far so good doesn't fall off i can if i like like i said before i can make it tighter if i need to you know just tie them in a knot but i think that i got it adjusted just perfectly for my face so that would work but there you go guys there's the finished product and the cool part is these spider webs they glow in the dark yep just in time for halloween glow in the dark spider webs so anyway i hope you guys got some ideas i hope you got something out of it um and uh my sewing machine experiment went okay but um I think with this particular machine and with my setup, it would probably be best to use it only for small projects like a mask. Um, it does run the battery down pretty quickly because, well, you've got the draw from the inverter plus the draw from the sewing machine and it's light going on the whole entire time. And if you can't sit directly out in the sun while all that's going on, you're not, just not going to have enough juice. Um, but there are options out there. I'm thinking about doing a video about it because I do know that a lot of us like to do arts and crafts. And so in our rigs, um, and sewing by hand is beautiful. It's one of the most relaxing, awesome things that you can do, but let's just face it. Sometimes we just always don't have time to do that. And, um, I wanted to experiment with this because, you know, it was taking me quite a few hours just to make one mask doing it by hand even though I was enjoying myself, um, it's not very practical. And this did take a little bit less time, but I'm not so sure if it's worth the trade-off, really, to be honest. But I just wanted to show you that it can be done. Um, I guess if I want to continue using a conventional sewing machine, I'm going to have to get a, a larger battery bank, at least, and maybe some higher-powered solar. 
Um, but that's not going to be for this rig because this rig doesn't have the room and um, who knows what's going to happen in the future. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys, you can set up your van to use a sewing machine or any type of appliance that you need to. You just have to know what you're doing and have the right amount of power. And um, I also wanted to give you guys a little, I don't know, tutorial on how to make a mask and give you maybe some, some ideas. So anyway, I hope you guys liked it. I hope you got something out of this. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Check my um, descriptions for uh, Amazon links. And just so you know, too, um, anything that I put up there that has to do with Amazon, I am going to get a small percentage of whatever sales that go through my links happen. Um, yeah, so it is a paid a paid deal. Um, it doesn't cost you guys anything extra, but Amazon does give me a percentage of each sale that happens through my links whether you buy the product that i present or not if you go through my link then whatever else you buy on amazon does support the channel and i really appreciate it and um yeah i just wanted to remind people of that every once in a while and just check my descriptions for other goodies too because i've got you know random videos and and my email address for you guys and all that kind of stuff so anyway um yeah Happy sewing, you guys. It's going to be winter time. People are going to want to be all snuggy in their van and doing something, you know, um, you know, I don't know, nice and relaxing like, like sewing. So yeah, whether you sew by hand or if you can figure out a way to do a machine, you know, more power to you. You can do this kind of stuff in a van. So thank you very much for watching and we will talk to you next time. All right. Bye.